may I say something? Yeah. It's incredible men like you mm-hmm. that make me that make me fantasize having a tight, tight Swedish vagina. We have to meet, be at the lantern by three. We do. We'll have time. I can text Tiffany and tell her that we're on. We'll be on our way. We will. Te- we will let her know that we'll be a little bit late, and please tell her not to feel hurt. I don't want her to feel st- stood up. I am Eric Erica, E R I K slash E R I K A. My male name is Eric Leaf Erickson the first. My female name is Erica Lovisa Anderson. The reason I have two names is because I want to break into show business, and Eric. Erica is kind of like, remember Julie Andrews in Victor Victoria? That same concept. Okay. Both male and female. Because the Lord Jesus has blessed me, I think, with the versatility to encompass both the, the male and female. Hence the two names. Eric, Erica. Okay. I admit I'm gay. Um, I'm not proud of it. But, I mean, I can't help it. Like, if I see a really sexy, hot, good-looking dude in skin-tight blue jeans, it's like, God, God, please tell me how I can get into his pants. I- I'm just being honest. That's good. No, that's all I ask. I mean, God, what do I have? I have begged Jesus to give me multiple boyfriends. But Jesus won't give me boyfriends. Yeah. And ask him. He won't tell me. I want him. I want many boyfriends. Dozens. One cannot satisfy me. I should, I should admit I'm also a nymphomaniac. Yeah. I mean, I'm a nymphomaniac. I, I think that the part of my brain that, that controls a sex urge, I think mine's overdeveloped. Here's a shocker, people. You're not going to believe this, but I swear on the king. Do you have a Bible? I'm, I'm going to swear on the Bible. Right behind you. There's a kid's Bible and there's another Bible. Right there. Lord Jesus and... You good people that are going to see this video, I swear on the Bible, I am still, believe it or not, I swear I am still a virgin at the age of 52. But I, I have had oral sex with a couple guys. Mm-hmm. But two guys in an entire decade? That's hardly what I call promiscuous. That's almost virginal. Two guys in 10 years? I um, I admit I was I was cruising I was mm, I'd been drinking a couple of uh, King Cobra forty ounce beers and I was buzzing like a Christmas tree and I was feeling no pain and I was walking up and down Ionia Avenue looking for guys I was cruising and this good looking Puerto Rican man picked me up and uh, I went over to his house and. Um, <clears throat> He shared some of his powerful marijuana with me, on top of the fact that I already had a couple of 40 ounces in me, the King Cobra. And we, um, we, we only had oral sex. It was oral sex. I won't go into de- details because it's very, very, very sensual and very, uh, very adult. But it was the time of my life. And then he dumped dumped me, that little you-know-what. He dumped me. I don't have any attraction to women. Zero. Zero. Why do you think that is? It's got something to do with the fact that I was adopted and I found out that my biological father was a very cold man who suggested to my biological mother that he had the affair with. He was a married man with his own, his own children. And he seduced my mother, my mother, Barb, who I have met, my biological mother. She was seduced by him. They, they had sex in one of the classrooms where he taught because she was one of his students. They had sex on a table and I was conceived. I am a product of lust. I'm a product of adultery. When he found out that she was pregnant, he kind of panicked. This is back in 1962, when society was very, very judgmental of pregnant, unwed women, namely my biological mother. He suggested that she abort me. Here I am, 52, 53 years later, I wasn't aborted. 
You think the, the Lord had his hand on me then, protecting me from being murdered in my mother's womb? You think so, Steve? Mm -hmm. I have struggled with suicidal thoughts, but the Lord Jesus has, is delivering me from those. I was having suicidal thoughts. I said, Lord, I don't know if I can go on. Do something, Jesus. And he said, get into my word. Read Psalms. Read Psalm 139. One of the verses in Psalm 139 is, and Lord Jesus, in your book, they all were written the days fashioned for me, when, yet, when as yet there were none of them. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I am homeless. You are homeless. I am homeless. Okay. Ask me where I slept last night. Where did you sleep last night? On the top floor of the stairwell of one of the car ramps at the Grand Rapids Community College. I got my nice, my nice blanket and my layers, and I got some good sleep. Oh, that was after I, uh, I had four Steel Reserve 24-ounce cans of beer at 8.1 alcohol per alcohol by volume. That's one of the stronger beers on the market. I'm not ashamed. I'm, I'm not proud of mine being an alcoholic, but you know what? The Lord Jesus, when he and I can collaborate, I'll pick out a new first day of sobriety and I'll go for it. Back in 2011, I was sober for the first half of the year. So if I can do it then, I can do it again. I believe I, believe I can be Christian and gay at the same time. And a lot of people don't agree with me, but you know what? I don't care. I don't care what people think. I care what Jesus thinks. Oh, I became saved in February of 1984 in my hometown of Redneck Alpena, Michigan. It was at the First Assembly of God. Pastor Capitelli was there. And there was a traveling, traveling uh, preacher named Paul, Reverend Paul Schmees, out of Oxford, Michigan, who the, whom the Lord delivered from, I believe, drugs. And he was also a drug dealer. There are times, there are times where I, I, I have this ongoing fantasy where I have, I actually have oral sex with Jesus. Does that shock you? Mm. Um, he, he'll, he'll sit in my lap and he, we'll, just, we'll just go at it. I mean, it's amazing. I met Tiffany back when I first went to the Take Hold Church for the first time. Probably back in 2010. Well, why is she so great? Because I think, because she's so non-judgmental, she accepts me for who I am. She knows I'm gay. She doesn't care. What does that say to you? That says that that says she's a very, 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 very Christ-like woman. Because she doesn't condemn me. She doesn't. She's not bigoted like some of these Christians. Oh, you're a queer. You're a fag. You're gonna burn in hell. It's like whoa. Get a little emotional. Well, it's beautiful. I might cry. Why? Because I'm so inspired by the wonderful people that I've met at Take Holy Church. You're all so wonderful. <laughs>